Hey everybody, today we're going to take a look at a fairly inexpensive 16 inch scroll saw made by Central Machinery and sold through the Harbor Freight stores. The first thing we notice about this saw is it's not that heavy, so it's pretty easy to move around. This is what the right side of the machine looks like. If I zoom into the label, you can see it's identified as a 16 inch variable speed scroll saw. Maximum cutting depth of 2 inches. The table will tilt up to 45 degrees to the left. We'll look at that a little bit later. It uses 120 volts AC standard voltage. Stroke speed ranges from 400 to 1600 strokes per minute and the stroke length is one inch. Here's what the back of the machine looks like. Here's what the left side looks like. Here's what the top side looks like. This is what the front of the machine looks like. We have the on off switch right here. This is the motor speed control. This is a hose connection for dust collection. And this little knob here tightens the clamp that holds the table from tilting. We'll play with that a little bit later. So from the top side of the machine, way in the back, you can see the knob that's used to tension the blade. Along here, we have a little air hose to try and blow the dust away from the blade. We'll see how effective that is. And we have a knob here that clamps this rod which holds the hold down foot in place. Looking at the bottom of the unit, we see there's four mounting holes with little rubber grommets in them. We got one here, one here, this is the front of the machine. And in the back we've got two. The whole machine seems to be mounted on a pretty stiff uh, cast iron base. And the unit does use a grounded plug. Taking a quick look underneath the tabletop, and you'll see that it's just made out of sheet metal. It's not a cast tabletop. So we'll go ahead and move the saw, and you'll see how it works. You also see that there's a counterweight right here that's most likely there to help with vibration. Let me go ahead and turn the saw on. I've got the speed control set at the slowest setting. It's fully counterclockwise. Turning the speed control up. That's full speed. That's the slowest speed. When I turn it back on, the saw does start moving right away. I had it set at the fastest speed. Turn it off and turn it back on again. It starts right back up at the fastest speed. One thing to notice about the on-off switch, there's no uh, locking mechanism to prevent it from being turned on. So as long as the unit's plugged into the wall, somebody turns the switch on, the saw will start moving. Here's another shot of using the speed control. Here we're all the way counterclockwise. Turning it more and more clockwise. That's full speed. That's the slowest speed. Here's the way you go ahead and adjust the angle of the tabletop. You just loosen this knob and the table is allowed to tilt. That's as far as it can go that way. And that's about as far as it can go that way. 
let me go ahead and get this hold down foot out of the way and that's as far as the table tilts and actually the blade is hitting the insert let me move the camera all right so when I tilt the table all the way up this way the blade is actually hitting the insert if I pull this insert out carefully it is plastic and maybe try turning it around this way okay so now the table can tilt to its maximum without the insert interfering with the blade at all but it is interesting to note that the insert fits in either way something to keep in mind and it definitely fits in this way but when it's in this way the blade hits the insert right there okay alright so as you just saw I used a screwdriver to get the insert out and then after shutting the camera off I realized oh I could just reach underneath and pop the pop the insert out so clearly the smarter way to take the insert in and out just reach up from underneath it also seems like one of the first scroll saw projects I should maybe do is make a wooden insert in place of this plastic one but we'll see All right, for my purposes, I'm going to want to run the tabletop perpendicular to the blade. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the little screw here that's holding the foot, just so I can get the foot out of the way. Okay, I'm going to loosen the knob so now the table can be moved. I'm going to take part of a combination square and I'm going to put it up against the blade. So let me move the camera so you can see. All right, so you can see that there's a gap between the combination square and the blade. So what I need to do is move the tabletop. Just so that the blade is shown to be perpendicular with the table. As you can see, it kind of has to fiddle with it a little bit. But that seems pretty good right there. Tighten down the knob. And we're good. All I'd have to do now is put the foot back on and we'd be ready to go. All right, let's talk about changing the blade now. So this knob in the back is used for tensioning the blade. And when I pluck the blade, like a guitar string and then turn this knob that way counterclockwise you can hear the pitch go down and when I get to a point I can actually remove the blade so let's go ahead and take this foot off again so you can get a better view Let's pop the insert out. Okay, so the blade is pretty loose right now. So if I push down on the upper arm, I can actually remove all the tension from the blade and remove it.
All right, so let's take a closer look at the blade itself. It is a five inch scroll saw blade with what are called pinned ends. So there are a couple of little pins on that end and of course the same sort of pins on the other. If we look closely down where the insert was, and we look at the lower arm, you can see that there's an indentation in the steel right there and that's to accept the pins. So when the blade goes in, the, the blade goes through this slot and the pins rest in that indentation. While we're here, you might also notice that there's another indentation on this side. It looks like 90 degrees in another slot. So just as easily, the blade could go in this way. Likewise, we could turn the blade around and put the blade in this way. And the fourth combination would be to have the cutting teeth pointed toward the rear of the machine and the blade actually in that way. So with the blade in the way I think most people would use the saw, certainly the way I intend to, the cutting teeth are facing out toward the front of the machine and the blade will be in this location. In this position, the wood is actually pushed through the blade from the front to the back of the machine to make the cut. If I put the blade in on this side, which, who knows, maybe I'll have an opportunity or a reason to try that, I would push the work from the right side of the machine toward the left. And then, of course, the opposite if I spin the blade around this way. And then finally, if I put the blade in with the cutting teeth, facing the back of the machine, I would actually have to pull the work from the front toward the, sorry, to, from the back of the machine toward the front in order to make the cut. So this is, I think, pretty versatile in the way you can actually mount the blade. You have four different positions. So the cutting teeth are, are positioned so they are pointing down. Put the bottom side of the blade in, push the arm down, slide the blade through the slot at the top, make sure it's the pins are resting in those little indentations. Turn the knob in the back of the machine clockwise to tension the blade. So this scroll saw for me is basically a motorized coping saw. So this particular coping saw I've had for a really long time, like decades. And uh, I remember as a kid using this saw before I was allowed to use power tools. The handle kind of loosens here and that allows you to spin the blade around to a different angle. And then you can tighten the blade again and now while you're making your cut, here are the cutting teeth for the blade, you can you know, accommodate your workpiece and the cut that you're trying to accomplish. So for me, in a lot of ways, this scroll saw is just a motorized version of, of this. So I thought I'd take a second and show you this variety pack uh, that I picked up at Harbor Freight. This pack consists of six five-inch pinned pin end scroll saw blades. If I zoom in on the blades themselves, I hope you can see that the number of teeth per inch, the width of the blade, and I believe actually the kind of teeth that are on the blade or that make up the blade they're different, so you get kind of a, a variety. 
If you do decide to pick up this saw and try it out, you might want to consider picking up this blade pack at the same time. Um, just so you have a few more choices as you start using the saw and learn about what you can do. All right, now I'd like to conduct a little experiment. I've been looking at this tube here and wondering how effective it really is at blowing the sawdust away from the blade. So I just swept up some sawdust from the shop floor, piled it on my tabletop here. I'm going to take the screw out that secures the tube. And what I want to do is turn the saw on. We'll start at the slowest speed, swivel the tube around, and see if it moves any of the sawdust. We'll discover together. So here we go. The saw is on the slowest speed. I move the tube. Oh, you can see that it is blowing a little bit of the dust around. Let's speed up. Let's go to the fastest speed. Spin the tube around. And there you go. So it does look like it blows the sawdust around. So I'm actually surprised. This looks like it's functional. So you may have noticed that this scroll saw has some blemishes, some damage to the tabletop, mostly to the paint. That's because I bought this saw used from a gentleman that didn't need it anymore. Uh, the saw, brand new, I think sells for about 130 bucks or so at the Harbor Freight stores. You might be able to find it on special at the Harbor Freight stores for 99 bucks. I actually picked this up for $40 used, so they can be had very inexpensively.